that was a, even though I was being like, okay, I'll do that, I did inside, I was going, like, yes, <laughs> that's awesome. Anyway, um, okay, anything else? Is there going to be a horse hall ground for Halloween 666? Yes. Now I have it with me, actually. It's one of the ones I have with me. I have a part four, five, and six with me. <clears throat> and uh, they were fun. Part five was a lot of fun. Uh, basically, Don Shanks spent two days with me and went to every location. And having him there, I mean, talk about just what a, you know, so much easier uh, to have the actual guy there, as you would know, who does this stuff too. And when, if you're with somebody who's in the movie and they can tell you, oh, no, no, right here is where we did you. Know, it's like, makes it so much easier. I mean, he, he showed me stuff I would have never found. You know, like especially the stuff in the opening of the film that happened out in the woods by the the river and everything with the hermit shack. And then he showed me, oh, this is where the original stuff was shot with Dr. Death. And we came back and we shot this over here and rebuilt this. And I was like, how would I have ever known that? You know, I mean, it, it's, uh, that was really cool to have him there. And he's just such a good sport. I mean, he's, I, I think you guys met Don Shanks. I mean, the nicest guys you've ever met. He's just like, okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you sure you want to do this all day? You know? He's like, sure, man. <laughs> Didn't ask for anything, just, you know, such a cool guy. Um, we spent two full days going to those locations. I mean, that was two full days of filming and him driving around with us. I just kept waiting for him to be like, yeah, guys, you know, I think I'm going to pow out. Oh, trooper. Did the whole thing. Uh, yes. Halloween cast members. 
And she said to me, every time I'd ask one of these people, how do I find the rest of the people, your name kept popping up. You need to talk to Sean Clark. He knows where everybody is. Talk to Sean Clark. And finally she got to Tom Lee Wallace. Tommy said, hey man, you know, Sean's buddy. Yeah, call him up. You know? <laughs> and uh, so, so Tommy basically said, you know, he, he told her to call me. And that's what happened. And uh, <clears throat> as far as the convention thing, you know, she was literally calling me to locate the other cast members. And she, I wasn't going to push the convention thing. I'd gone down that road with her before and it just didn't go anywhere. So I didn't bring it up, and right in the middle of the conversation, she says, you know, what about these conventions? You know, do you think I could make any money, you know, raise some money for the children's hospital, one of these things? And I, let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest is history, you know. Uh, it's a shame she only wanted to do the one, but, you know, that's, hey, she did one. I mean, at least she did it, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you will. I can't say who. I mean, I, there's definitely, I have a wish list. Uh, I have people I'm trying, I'm trying, man, you know. Um, I mean, I, I, Rustler is super tight with Anthony Hopkins. I mean, they're buddies. And I put in a serious offer, a serious offer to Hopkins. And uh, Russell told me that he's just like, oh, I did one of those once. I'll never do that again. And, and, and then I was like, yeah. and then Russell goes, dude, the man shits money. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, yeah, I get it. No, it is what it is. We try. Um, any other questions? Yes? Who was your wish list? Oh, God. Wish list Christian Bale, uh, Kurt Russell.
question is basically, is was it always my intention to make the episodes fun, humorous, and uh, more from a fan perspective? And yeah, they told me. I mean, I just did it the way I wanted to do it, you know? And I, uh, you know, I just, I try to keep it very spontaneous. I, I don't script anything. Obviously, the stuff between Russell and I is semi-scripted. We just come up with a scenario and then we just improvise. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, I, I always felt like if I show up and then we just like, okay, this is where, I basically tell my camera, okay, I'm going to start here, I'm going to go over to there, I'm going to end right there. And, and then I just start talking, you know, and, you know, I screw it up a lot. But, but I, I don't want it to be scripted. I want it to be more just spontaneous, feels more natural. Um, because that's the one thing that, you know, there was a show on the Travel Channel, I think, like, a long time ago, I think it was hosted by Christopher Knight. Anybody see that? You know, Peter Brady from the Brady Bunch, where he was like, now I'm standing in front of the house from the Sopranos. And that was like it. I mean, it was like, it was so boring. And, and you could tell that he didn't give a shit. He was just getting a paycheck, you know? And I was just like, yeah, you know, that was my fear when I talked to some networks about doing this in the series. Everybody wanted to push it into that stupid, like, cookie cutter crap, you know, and I was like, no, if, if I can't do it my way or I'm just doing my thing, I don't want to do it, you know, I don't want it to be fake, you know. That's why I really don't do episodes of films I don't like, because it wouldn't be forced, it wouldn't be natural, I'd be like, it's a shitty movie was made. <laughs> I want to be like, right here, get snap later, <laughs> you know. Uh, anybody else? Thank you, sir. Now that Halloween box has done, do you have any stereotype releases coming out that you're looking forward to? Any future episodes you're looking forward to? Well, um, we're currently working on, and I'm a little nervous about it just because we're under the gutter time wise, but currently I'm assigned to Escape from New York. I don't know if we're going to do an episode. We could. I've been looking into it. And it's possible. It's just time. I mean, it's, it's really the time to do it. Um, so we'll see. I mean, you know, because I'm not not only you see, I started a production company called Video Films, and we are now doing bonus features for for the DVDs as well, not just for autographs. It's my same team, Buzz Wallet and Andrew Cash. Uh, you know, there were the guys behind like Never Sleep Again and all that stuff, they, they did that. Um, they are my team, and uh, so we're now doing bonus features. So in the Halloween box set, we were in charge of beyond the regular HHG episodes. We did all the bonus features for Halloween 4, all the bonus features for Halloween 5, and all the bonus features for H2O. And we even did some crossover stuff for Part 6 um, you know, with Michael Felcher. Red shirt, since we were interviewing a lot of the same people, you know, he helped us out a little bit. We helped him out. Um, so we're all over that thing, and that's why I got so busy. So that was such an undertaking in such a short period of time. Um, so on Escape, we're we've been given the whole thing. So it's like you got to figure out what to do. And I was talking to Carpenter about it two weeks ago. It's like they're porting over everything from the old editions. So it's like what. Do I, what could I even bother, what could I do with you? I said to him, I said, really, you've done commentary, you've done making of it, what more can you say? I'm like, nothing. <laughs> I was like, okay. And so I even asked his advice, I said, do you have anything that you can think of that you'd like to see on the new edition? I think you can dig up some of those dead people to talk about it. And I said, okay, I guess not. So yeah, I'm a little concerned about what we can bring new to the table, other than just interviews with some of the people that have never talked about it. Like, uh, I mean, there's a couple in particular I really want to get. I'm hoping we get. So I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I saw a panel somewhere. Yes. Um, <coughs> Yeah. 
that's just, again, busy and sound laziness for me busy. Um, I want to put them out just online. I got permission from Screen Factory to put those online. They, they're cool with it. They said just wait like six months, you know, and it's been way beyond six months. So <clears throat> basically he's asking about the uncut versions of Halloween 2 and 3. Um, but have, just have, part 3 just has a couple of cut lines. Part 2 has a completely different ending where I'm in the hospital bed as, Lance, as uh, Jamie Lee Curtis and Lance Guest is flirting with me. And okay, we intercut me into the film and it's really good. I mean, it, it gets the biggest laughs of anything I've ever shown. But they wouldn't let us put it in there. I was so bummed. But anyway, uh, yeah, I gotta put that on. I wish I had brought it with me. I'll just show that one scene. That's the question I get the most is what if, can I ever do a full, like all the episodes in one release? I, the problem with that is the clip ownership, you know, that it, that's how I get away doing it on the actual film because. They're not going to ask us for clip rights when you're buying a movie, you know. So to put them all on one box set, I think logistically would be a nightmare. Um, and at the end of the day, financially not worth it for anybody. I mean, I've talked to Scream about it, but I, I don't know. And then that's the other thing, unless you're doing something really different, the people that would buy those episodes already have those Scream Factory releases, you know, probably. I'd like to. <laughs> yeah. You have a lot of questions. <laughs> Let's just talk later. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Door, this big ass metal door, and it's locked. And he's like, it's on the other 
side of the store. You know? <laughs> oh man. And then he shows me where the room was with the baby container. Nobody's questioning us right now. But then we bump into those security guards. They're like, oh hey, I'm like, hey. <laughs> How so did, uh, did you go up there and talk? Oh yeah, we're good. We're good. Yeah, yeah, and I remember the guy's name on the card. Yeah, someone's up, yeah, all good, talk to them. And done. Yeah, well, hey, can you unlock that door? Sweet, bro, come on. <laughs> Went down there, they unlocked it, and they were like, yeah, you know, we got some stuff to do, so, um, you know, you guys good? Oh, well, we're good, bro. And he leaves, I'm like, no, 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 come on, come on. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. And I'm like telling, oh, we're like backup plans, but so okay, get another disc ready in case they bust us, you give them another one, and, you know, whatever. We're thinking of all the scenarios. Nothing happened. Uh, we walk, walk out, so thanks for everything, dude. You guys are the best. What's your name? We'll put you in the credits. You guys are awesome. <laughs> so I think we did put them in the credits. <laughs> It'll be fire. <laughs> but, um, no, so there's some shit like that that I, you know, hey, you gotta get it done for the people, you know? We can't be denied the tunnels. Come on. <laughs> Plus, that episode needed, needed beef that was a little light. So that was kind of like a make or break location. I was kind of like, man, if we don't get this, we don't have an episode. So we got it, and we're good. And, uh, oh, what the fuck is this? Oh, <laughs> fake cockroach. <laughs> um, all right, you, you, can, you can film now. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. Since Josh Harden did the commentary, you any chance to get one of these? Uh, I'll give you the story on Josh Hart. Um, super cool guy. Uh, I did the interview with him for H2O. Really cool. His publicist showed up, and I, you know, when, bottom line is, I brought up the convention thing, and she shut it down so fast. I mean, it was just like, oh, no, 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 no. conventions, no, no. So. It, it, I basically couldn't really talk to him about it because she was there holding his hand the whole time. So, and then I saw him two weeks later at San Diego Comic Con. <laughs> signing for Penny Dreadful. You know, it was a free signing, but still. Is that a convention? Never. But he's a really cool guy. I liked him a lot, and he, he, was, he had some good stories. Uh, and one of the funner interviews. Really nice guy. Plus, I got my poster signed. <laughs> yeah. You thought about a cool Don Shanks was for giving you a lot of information that you wouldn't have been able to find on yourself. Did you write to protect anyone on their memories of <sighs> That is the most uncomfortable thing. He's asking if when I've had, like Don Shanks did part five episode with me, if I've ever had to correct someone on their memory, you know, and yeah. all right, I'm gonna Steve Miner, love the dude to death, he's awesome. But constantly during the commentary on H2O, he kept referring to the mask incorrectly. Because I brought it up, I really wanted to bring up during the commentary how the mask keeps changing from the KMB version, to the Stan Winston version, the Beekler version that's in the scene where uh, Mary Chambers gets her throat cut. I was, you know, pointing it out. And, and a few times I'll think, oh, there's the, that's the KMD version. Oh, there's the Winston. And he kept referring to the Winston as his mask. He kept saying, that's my mask. But then he would do it during, when they showed the KMD one. Yeah, see, that's my mask. And I'm like, no, that's the one we replaced. Oh, fine. I, and it got to the point where I just stopped. I, I, I'm like, I'm not going to spend a whole commentary correcting the guy. I just shut up, let them talk. People want to hear them talk about me. But I hate it when something goes on record like that and then perpetuates the myth. Well, well no, you heard it. Steve Miner said that. It's wrong. I love him, but he's wrong. He doesn't even care. They're not as passionate about it as we are, you know what I mean? He doesn't know. He didn't even know that that was the Beekler mask in that scene. And I and he's like, oh, that's right. They brought that in for one day when we were arguing about the other, about replacing it. So what happened was the KMB version was the one they started shooting with. Then an executive said they hated it, pull it. Then they said, what did they use in the last movie? This is what we used in the last movie. Okay, get that. They shot for a day with that. 
then Winston brought in a new one, like backed it out super fast. Uh, a sculptor that works for Winston and backed it out real fast. But they brought that in and reshot a lot of close ups. But like if you watch, I think I point out one of the scenes, like how the mask is changes like eight times. It's like, look okay, at Winston, oh, that's Candy. That's a Winston, Candy. That's the Winston again. I mean, because it's constantly changing in, in several scenes. Um, but anyway, I'm just, nobody really cares. I'm just a dork. <laughs> and, yes? Mm -hmm. uh, she's asking that, uh, that I had been working on Lost Boys episode of Horse All Grounds uh, that Corey Haim was supposed to be in, but he passed away, obviously. And basically. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I, I mean I do it. I do it still. Um, but it was one of those things we were kind of doing for fun because Corey was a friend. So we shot. We didn't shoot with him. We shot just the cave, uh, the Lost Boys caves. We shot that because we knew we needed to get it. And then we were going to go to Santa Cruz with Corey and shoot stuff there. And then he passed away. And then we're like, well, screw it. You know, we were only going to do it because he was willing and he was a friend and it wasn't for a release or anything. So once he passed away, it just kind of the whole project kind of died. So, somebody, uh, yes. Okay, the HBO was Yeah, I point that out too. It's, it's the scene where Charlie gets killed. Well, well, he, well, he turns after getting the corkscrew out of the sink and he turns and he faces Michael for a second. They couldn't get the actor back for that scene because they're in the same frame. Um, so they just did a CGI thing, which I think Steve said on the commentary. It looked pretty good. <laughs> Yes. Uh, how did you come about you moderating the commentary for Swamp Tag? 
that was just uh, moderating the commentary for Swamp Thing as well as the Deadly Blessing of Wes Craven, two different times, same director. Um, that, those were both just, Felsher was doing the bonus features for those, and he needed someone to moderate, and he just called me up and goes, hey, could, are you in town right now? Like, yeah. Uh, you want to do a commentary with Wes Craven tomorrow for Swamp Thing? Okay. <laughs> I mean, the funny thing is, he, I wake up, this is a true story, true story. I wake up, I get up, it's like 8 a.m., I go on, turn my phone on, you know, Felt sure. call me, you know, immediately, I call him. What's up? Dude, is there any way you can do a commentary today at 2 o'clock with Wes Craven for Deadly Blessing? I've never seen the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen it. I've never seen Deadly Blessing. I, it, I don't own it. It's not even released in the US. It's like the DVD was like foreign DVD. So I called a friend of mine. Dude, do you have Deadly Blessing? He's like, you yeah, Legion 2? Like, yeah, I got it. Dude, bring it to my house now. <laughs> so he brought it over. I sat down. I watched it. Took some notes. Jumped in my car. Drove to LA. Literally walked in and sat down and did a commentary that I, the most nerve wracking commentary I've ever done because I usually come in totally out of this movie. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about the fog. You know? <laughs> Deadly blessing. I, I, I didn't know. But everybody that heard it, I could like, shout back at people were like, dude, you killed it on Deadly Blessing. Good actor. <laughs> Just kind of push it. And that's the other thing with Wes isn't much of a talker. He doesn't elaborate much. He'll just, you know, so, hey, we're, you know, this and that. He'll just go, oh, that was a, that. And he'll just stop and he'll be like, dead air, can't have dead air. That's what moderators are supposed to do, keep on talking, you know. <sighs> um, all right, we got 22 minutes. This thing's like about seven minutes long. Let's watch this real quick and we can talk a little bit about it at the end and then, uh, yeah, wrap it up. Right. No filming, nobody William Shatner. I guess having a video saying this is exactly what it is, this is exactly what was done, that wasn't uh, something they, a can of worms they wanted to open. So, anyway, it lives on through this. <laughs> we'll throw it up on YouTube someday or something, I don't know, who knows. But uh, anyway, I hope you guys like that. That was a lot of fun to make. That was my house, uh, my garage, and my dining room. Tommy just came over and stayed the night and uh, got really high off of paint fumes in my garage. <laughs> spray, spray paint in the garage. Uh, so, let's see. It's, we've got, we've got, well, I don't actually got like 14 minutes. Um, so, any other questions about some of the crap that's uh, on this or that I might be doing or not doing? Or, what would you like me to do that kind of thing? Go ahead. Um, what do you think the coolest special feature you contributed to the Halloween box set? The coolest special feature I contributed to the Halloween box set. I'm going to have to say the 8D. It's a toss up between the H2O and the, H, the Halloween 4 making ofs. They're really good. <clears throat> I mean, I'll tell you, when I sat down, it's kind of like the, the Escape from New York thing I was just talking about. I was like, you know, how many different special bonus features or special editions has there been of Halloween 4? You know what I mean? I, I called Danielle and I said, hey Danielle, uh, guess what? Guess what I'm doing? I was dreading this phone call because I didn't know what her answer was. And I said, guess what I'm doing the box set? Doing the special features for 4 and 5, you know. Do an interview and she goes, and this is exactly what I knew she'd say. She goes, Jesus fucking Christ, I mean, what more can I say about those goddamn films that I haven't already said? And I was like, I totally hear you. And I said, look, this is what I want to do. I want to do something different. I want to take the interviews in different directions. I want to ask stuff that I don't know has ever been asked. Um, and, I, you know, I said, of course, I'm going to have to ask some of the generic bullshit because we have to do that. But I think I can make it different. I think I can make it fun. And 
them. She goes, okay, you know, it is a favor, you know. And really, we got some great stuff. I mean, there are things talked about, stories I've never heard, and I thought I heard them all, you know. And we really got some good, really good stuff. So I'm pretty happy, uh, pretty happy with it. Um, and then we dug up some people that have never done anything. You know, I wanted to get some new people, um, like Raymond O'Connor, you know, who was the creepy security guard to call me for the, you know, hell of a I got you. <laughs> Jesus, I got to this place. <laughs> He's great, and he talks just like <laughs> He's not that <laughs> That's it. Like, uh, anyone who had ever, I great. And he's coming to the signing we're doing at Dark Delicacies in L.A. on the 23rd, the, uh, the big box set signing. He's going to be there, so that's going to be cool. Um, let's see, it's some of the other unique people we got um, for. Well, uh, I never interviewed Dwight Little, so that was really cool. Went to his house and interviewed him at his house, so it was cool. Um, and Alan D. McElroy, he's done stuff, but uh, I know we got a bunch of new people. Top of my head, I'm blanking right now. But um, H2O, I was really proud of because you know we got Hartman, we got Darren Mercado, the cinematographer. Um, the best interview, hands down, and unfortunately, the best stuff he said would we were forced to cut because uh, it got controversial. Apparently, you know, they always want these things to be a little more of a fluff piece than you know getting into the dirt. Uh, but Robert Zappi, the writer on H2O, dude, he told some stories that, I mean, we're just like going, <laughs> they're not going to let us put this in there, but keep rolling. <laughs> um, and he knew it too, and he's, he's super cool, and he's just like, dude, I know they're probably going to make you cut that shit, and I was going to say it as it was, and I go, yeah, I'm going to fight for it, if I can get it in there, I'll get it in there. And we thought we had it. We thought it was like, and then got yeah, next. But <clears throat> basically, he told the story. Um, he was he wrote H two O, and it was right around the time that Kevin Williamson was hot shit. I mean, he had just done Scream, he had just done I know what you did last summer. So they were all we want Kevin Williamson's name on this as the writer. And so they came to him. And they said, hey, look, um, we're going to give story by credit to Kevin Williamson. And Robert's like, yeah. but he didn't write it. <coughs> I wrote it. And they fought it, and he, it went into arbitration as a writer's guild. And he won. Robert's happy and won. <coughs> they ruled in his favor. So then he gets a call from Bob Weinstein himself. And this is the story he tells that we have to cut. I'll tell it. Um, <laughs> He, he gets a call from Bob and says, and it was a three-way call with his agent and Bob, and he said, look, you know, we want Kevin Williamson to have story by credit, you can still get screenplay credit, we'll pay you $25,000 just to let him have story by credit. He goes, no, I couldn't do it. We'll give you $50,000 to just let story by credit. He goes, no, not going to do it. We will give you $75,000 and a three picture deal with Dimension Films. <laughs> now he said at this point he just had a baby, was a struggling writer, 75 G's and a three picture deal. Let me get back to you. He, go, he calls the writer's guild and he says, okay, if I write this letter saying that Kevin Williamson wrote this, you know, they said, we already ruled in your favor. It's done. You can take the money. We're not going to, we won't do it. You, it's, you, you've got the credit. It's done. So he went back to Bob and said, I can't do it. Can't do it. And he said that he just laid into him every curse word he's ever heard in his life. He said, This guy just went, and slammed the phone down. He said his agent was on the phone and said, Man, I never heard nothing like that. <laughs> He's all you know, he'll never work in this business again and all that stuff. But uh, so ultimately they made him an executive producer just to put his name on the film. 
He did contribute to a couple minor things. He contributed to the final scene, the beheading, and the idea of it being uh, an ambulance driver of swamp places with. And he also, the whole double gate scene, you know, with the keys and all that, that was his idea. So he contributed a few things. He did a little minor polish and apparently punched up a lot of the dialogue because he had that hit with the teenager dialogue for the time, I guess. Um, but ultimately, it was Robert's script. So. But I wish that story could have stayed in there. Because the way he tells it is so engaging. This guy, like, he's, he's a character. You'll, you'll love him in the documentary either way. He's, he's really good. Um, anybody else? Yes, sir. What if one was the hardest Halloween to set for six, or if one of the plus arrives? <laughs>
it's pretty funny where I'm at the convention as a guest, but I wasn't. But we pretended I was, and nobody cared about me, and I was sitting there. And one by one, celebrities are walking up to me going, dude, who the fuck are you? Like John Bernthal, you'd ask him. John Bernthal's like, who are you, man? And he's just like, he's like, Care about him and shit. You know, like, it's really funny. Like Zach Gallagher from Gremlins, Jason Lively from Night of the Creeps, David Delamaco from the Doc Saints, uh, Jason David Frank from Green Power Ranger. It's, it's pretty funny. <laughs> um, anyway, so we're at the convention. So, well, this guy was a guest at the convention. And um, I didn't know who he was. He was the voice of Yoda. He's there signing because he's the voice of Yoda, right? I'm in the bar at the hotel after hours, kicking it in the bar, drinking, sitting there. I'm like, look, I'm gonna call it night, right? And I get up, I'm about to walk out, and I hear this guy telling a story. He goes, and the weirdest job I ever had, he goes, I was working on Halloween H2O, and I'm like, <laughs> and, and he starts to tell the story about how he was hired to do Donald Pleasant's voice. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Thanks. Excuse me. I'm sorry, I just overheard you talk about H2O and, and he was drunk. <laughs> but he's like, yeah, okay, whatever. And he didn't, you know, like, he kind of blew me off. I'm like, well, whatever, you know. So I waited the next day at the convention. He's sitting at this table signing. I walked up to him and I said, hey, you know, last night in the bar. He's like, oh, hey, bro. And he was like, totally cool now. He's like, hey, bro. And I said, hey, this is, you know, we're doing this thing. Would you, we got the camera equipment here. Would you want to do an interview for it? He's like, sure. And, and we just dumb luck on that one. I was like, that's a cool, like, weird, you know, person to have in the documentary. And that's why when you see his interview, it's in a totally different background. It's in a ballroom somewhere. Um, but very cool guy, and we just got really lucky on that one. So, but I hope you guys dig it. September 23rd, this is Green Factory in Bay. If you haven't ordered it, do it. It's amazing. Seven episodes of Horace Hall Grounds in it. The part one episode uncut, so extra footage. Two and three regular versions from Screen Factory. Four, five, and six, brand new. And a Halloween, uh, so one we shot a 35th convention bus tour with all the fans that attended. We're going to the location. It just seemed like there's there something we shot to put online for them as a little keepsake. And when this thing suddenly fell in my lap, I said, dude, I'm sure they want me on the box set. So. Put it on there to kill. Anyway, hope you guys have a good weekend. Thanks for coming.